Hi there, everybody. This is Wendy Hernandez, and I am so happy that you are joining us for this episode of the Family Law Insider Podcast. I am excited, excited, excited about my guest today. She is the menopausal mom, Marsha Kestra-Doyle. She has a lot of fans out there watching. Hi, everybody. Say hi, Marsha. <laughs> Good afternoon. And, <laughs> and Marsha has a book coming out really soon, and it's called Who Stole My Spandex? Midlife Musings from a Middle-Aged MILF. And today, Marsha is here to talk to us on mating marriage and making it all work, and she's a master at doing that, and I'm amazed at all the things that she's juggled in her life on top of being a writer and a great wife and a mom and all kinds of stuff. So welcome, Marsha, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so I recently discovered your blog, Marsha, and it just it spoke to me so much because, you know, I read some of the blogs and they actually um, made me cry, some of them and made me laugh out loud because I related to so much of what you were saying as a mother and as a wife. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, I, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about how it is that you're able to tap into such authenticity in your writing and in speaking to people. But before we do that, let's talk about you and where you are and what your life is like. So who are you? Hey. Well, uh, married uh, 30 years, four kids, crazy life, <laughs> writing. <laughs> and so you've been married to one man for 30 years? One man. <laughs> one man. I'm crazy, right? If I say 30 years, it sounds like I'm from the Jurassic era or something, but yes, 30 years. <laughs> it's really, that is very rare in this day and age for people to stay married yes, um, for, that, for that long. Um, and it seems like just from reading some of your blog posts that you and your husband have a pretty good relationship. Is that a fair statement? Or Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, like any marriage, we've had some great ups and some bad downs. I mean, you can't go through a marriage without having problems. And of course, we've had our share of problems, you know, but we just always come through. We always come through. So do you, in your relationship with your husband, what's his name? Mac. Mac. In your relationship with Mac, um, do you, did you and he ever reach a point where you felt like you were on the verge of the D word divorce? Did it ever get that bad for you? Um, he would say no, not for him. Um, but being a mom with you know the kids and everything going on in my life, I, w I was definitely feeling some frustrations. And I mean, he was a great husband, but it was me. I was battling my own inner demons. Um, and I, I do have depression issues that I had to deal with, all kinds of things going on in our life. And we had, we suffered some devastating losses and all these things combined. It, it was tough. I mean, you know, marriage is something you have to work at. You don't just get married, sit back and go, okay, life's good. You always, it's a constant thing. You have to keep tending to it, like tending to a garden, you tend to your marriage. You yeah. always have to do that. So, and, and I didn't know that piece about the depression issues, and thank you for sharing that, because I know that's it's really a personal thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, but it's also important for people to hear, because so many people do deal with those things, and they, you know, they get to the Absolutely. point where they, they feel like they're, you know, in despair, or just life is hopeless. Correct. Um, you know, especially trying to juggle so much. Mm -hmm. So, how, I mean, how did you muster up the energy or the willpower or whatever you needed to keep going when you reached those breaking points in your life? I had to say to myself, if it was a bad time, I would say to myself, this isn't forever. This is a bad moment. Let's say you're going through, you've got two toddlers in the house and they're driving you crazy, you feel like you're losing your sanity, and every day is a struggle to get out of bed sometimes. I would just keep reminding myself, this is not forever. These kids will grow up, they'll be independent, I will be on my own again one day, the kids will be out of the house, I'll be doing what I want for now, I have to put certain things on hold and, and deal what is happening right now at this moment. And, and that's a hard thing because when you're battling depression, you do tend to look at the future and go, oh, I, I, you know, my life is over, it's horrible. You really have to focus on the fact that it is, what you're going through right now is most likely temporary. And you just have to believe that it's going to be better. You, you have to have faith is what I, I think I'd like to say. You have to have yeah. faith. Yeah, totally. So did you ever have professional help when you were working through these times in your life or did you just, yes. uh, you did? When I was, uh, I had the depression since I was a child. I didn't know what it was back then. You know, there, back then you didn't talk about those things. Um, so I just knew that I was a little bit different than other people. And, you know, yes, I am weird. I, you know that from reading my blog. I've got my weird sense of humor. 
But um, yeah, you know, I always knew there was something that was just a little different, a little off. And um, it wasn't until recently, though, that I actually went to my physician and said, you know, look, this menopause brought it on. It, uh, it got really bad after menopause. And I thought, okay, we need to take care of this. Oh, wow. So, and uh, yes, I, you know, they put me on uh, medication. For me, it worked. I'm not saying that's the answer for everybody. For me, it was a godsend, you know. And so, okay. So, so up until the point when you started going through menopause and were you just kind of mm -hmm. dealing with this issue? Yes. You know, yourself without anybody's help? Wow. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm very fortunate though. My husband is extremely supportive. He has known this forever about me and he can see it coming. He can see the moods coming. A lot of it was hormonal stuff. Um, and he anticipated it and he just, he, I don't know, he just, he reads me so he knew how to handle me when those times came. And okay. humor, I mean humor is the key. Honestly, he knows, he knew how to make me laugh. He still knows how to make me laugh. When I'm having a <laughs> rotten day, I could be furious and he could just say one stupid thing and I will look at him and just bust out laughing. <laughs> and it works, it works. Yeah, that's a great quality to have mm -hmm. in a husband. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> so, you've been married 30 years. Um, has your conflict style then with your husband changed over the years from where it was in the beginning or was oh, uh, yeah. how how has that evolved well I think you know when we were first married as with any couple you know you have your insecurities you're adjusting to the marriage living together uh, insecurities jealousies those sort of things and then when you have children that brings in a whole new issue where it's all of a sudden hey I've been with the kids all day you take the kids I need my own time and you, we did argue a lot about whose turn it was to do, you know, whatever. A lot of that, a lot of that, very stressful. You know, you're up all night with a sick kid and one of you is exhausted and you argue about, well, you're at home with the kids, I have to go to work and uh. it, it, that was tough. And then you have, of course, the financial issues. So right. at a later stage in life, you start worrying about your retirement and your savings and what are you going to do? So yeah, there are different stages in your marriage that you're going to deal, I think, with these major issues and you have to be strong enough to be able to you know, overcome those things and yeah. whatever bad things, tragedies that come your way too. You have to, you have to have a secure relationship to get through that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and like I said, I just recently discovered, discovered you from what I've seen is that your family life is a lot, it, it is the basis for a lot of your writing. <laughs> yes. And how, I mean, um, Aside from the fact that you love to write, does this help you with processing or getting through conflict, the writing? Absolutely. It is, the, for me, the best form of self-expression. There were years where I didn't write and I was miserable. And I found that if the depression was getting bad, I would sit down and write poetry or just write something. Journaling. Journaling is great for people. Um, so if you're an artist, um, Sketch it out. If you dance, dance it out. All these things. You have to find what your passion is and be able to express yourself through that. Because if you don't have an outlet, it's just it just builds up inside you to the point of bursting, and that's when you're really in trouble. Have you always shared your writing like you do now, Marcia? I did when I was a lot younger. Um, I majored in creative writing at school many years ago, um, and. I tried publishing a lot of things when I was young and a little bit of success, but not much. And then, you know, bogged down with having four kids and everything. That's when I put the writing aside for probably 15 years. Wow. Um, I still have old manuscripts sitting underneath my bed, <laughs> but I yeah. didn't really get into sharing the writing until I started blogging. Okay. And how long ago, time. how long ago was that? Two and a half years. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you come, uh, I mean, you're not an overnight success because you have been writing forever, but you have come mm -hmm. such a long way in that two and a half years. That's amazing with the blogging. Thank you. I've been working it. <laughs> That's great. So, you know, and, and as I mentioned before, one of the things I just, I loved about your blogs is the fact that they're so real and honest. Um, you know, and at least when I'm writing creatively, I feel like it's easier for me to be honest on paper than it is to someone's face. Yes. How, how is that for you? Are you just as authentic with people in quote real life as you are when you put pen to paper? I am with my family and of course very close friends and a lot of my internet friends. I, you know, We private message each other on Facebook and I'll tell them all sorts of things. Um, it's harder for me in public. I am actually kind of shy so 
if I'm like at a party or something like that, it's hard for me to just open up to people. It, that, that is a little tough. It's much easier for me to blog about it. Much easier. Yeah, I mean, I can see, you know, your personality, I mean, it's just, it really is just flavorful on paper. I could just <laughs> see it. I can feel it, you know, and I just wonder how that comes through, how that expression is, is realized in your life. I get so much inspiration from my family. I, I do these posts um, called Fly on the Walls that Karen from Baking and Tornado sponsors. And we do these once a month. And it, what it is is it's all conversations that take place in our, in our home. And it's all real. And people go, come on, is this really what your house is like? And I'm like, yeah, it really is. Yeah. We're kind of a crazy bunch because they, all my kids inherited the humor from my husband. He is actually the humorous one. And it's, this house is just a funny house. I mean, just funny things happen. It seems like it from reading mm -hmm. what you write. Absolutely. So do you think then it's important for people to be authentic in their relationships with others? And do you think it's important to always be authentic? I think, yes, but there's also times when you need to learn to be tactful. If somebody, if something's wrong and there's a conflict, you know, you're not going to be, you can't, you shouldn't be mean and nasty to that person. You need to walk away or just be careful what you say, you know, that type of thing. If it's something serious, a serious matter, absolutely, you need to open up and be authentic, absolutely. But if it's something hurtful, I would say be very careful how you say it and what you say. Okay. So what's the difference between Marsha's voice now and Marsha's Mar voice in her 20s? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, let's see. Marsha in her 20s is probably a ball of insecurity. <laughs> yeah. Very insecure. And dealing with those, you know, the depression demons and just not knowing who I was and a very confusing time. Um, now I feel very good. I feel very confident, very relaxed. And that comes with age, too, I think. You know, I'm on the other side of midlife, so I'm kind of sitting back now and going, okay, I can, I'm watching everybody on the other side of the slope struggle, but I'm over here just relaxing in my lounge chair, yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's yeah. easier, I think, when you get older. So for somebody who's really struggling, you know, maybe a new mom um, or somebody who's in a new marriage or a new relationship and they're really trying mm -hmm. to figure it all out, figure themselves out, figure how they fit in to a new family, it, do you have ideas on how they can get in touch with that and with their their true voice, their authenticity? Um, I think number one to 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 hold it all together and to to make time for yourself to do self expression through art or whatever it is. First of all, you've got to be organized. You have to organize your time. And if you're a mom with several kids, don't be afraid to ask for help. Teach your kids young. They can do dishes. They can help fold laundry. You have to get your children. At elementary school age, my kids were doing this stuff because I couldn't do it all with four. Um, so you have to get help. Get your husband to help you. You know, he can do the, the shuttling back and forth and run errands and, and it, you know, your mom or your sister. If you need help, you need to ask for it. Too many moms are trying to be super moms and they, they're trying to do it all. And yeah. you can't. You just can't. That's where you have the breakdown. Totally. You know, yesterday I had this experience in the morning where um, I was rushing around, of course, running late for something, trying to get ready, mm -hmm. and I was carrying my hair dryer oh. and my round brush and my flat brush and my bottle of water <laughs> and my phone and then like a makeup oh. compact, and the makeup compact, the powder compact slipped out of my hand and it just oh. shattered, you know, powder oh. and dust everywhere, and I thought, hmm. Maybe I'm trying to carry too much, you know? <laughs> yes. Good metaphor for life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think, you know, your advice is great about not being afraid to ask for help, um, yep. especially to those super moms out there. Mm -hmm. so. And I would also say, just real quickly, I would add to that, as far as being organized, write everything down. Keep lists. Write down chores. Write down a schedule. I live by that. Maybe I'm a little OCD, but <laughs> I have lived by a schedule. My husband will tell you. We have sticky notes all over the house saying, don't forget this, don't forget that. Because I don't, I don't know how people do it without writing things down. I'd go crazy. I have to write it down. But staying yeah, organized and asking for help, that is the key. You know, and I can't imagine uh, with four children, what, what are the ages of your children? Like how far apart are they? Um, we have 27, 25, 23, and 19, 18. <laughs> I keep so thinking he's 19. He's 18. So relatively close together. Yes, they're about two years. Mm -hmm. And during the marriage, when you were raising the children and they were younger, did you work outside the home? No, I had an in-home job. And okay. so that was 
interesting because you're on the phone with clients and the kids are in the background screaming and throwing things at each other and, and you know a, a good friend said just take your shoe off while you're on the phone and throw it at the kids and they know to be quiet. That's what I do. I used to have my shoes I throw it at them and give them dirty looks. So That's good like, advice. <laughs> That's a good tip. I've never heard that one. I'll have to throw try it. <laughs> that is so funny. I mean I can imagine. I can just imagine because I know with a three-year-old it can get very chaotic okay. in the house. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> And so during those years where you weren't writing, did you have any other outlet? Not really. Um, I went to a gym, so I would work out. That helped. And I, yeah. I did belong to a mommy and me class. Yeah. And we, I would go twice a week and take the kids. That helped because I met other mothers. And that's another thing I think is important to have a good support system, not just within your family, but you need, you need other mom friends to talk to because they're yeah. all going through the same thing you are. And that, is, that gives you a lot more confidence about what you're doing. Yeah, and I think that's the comfort, comforting things um, that you're spread, or that's the comforting thing that you're spreading through your blogs and your work, you know, is that we all have this in common. I don't care if you're a mother or a dad, you know, we just, we all feel frazzled and worn out and on the yeah. edge Absolutely. sometimes, you mm -hmm. know, both with the kids and in our relationships and at work. I mean, it's just, it's, it's difficult. I don't want to be negative, but... I'm not trying to be. I'm really mm -hmm. hoping that we can help some people understand that they're not alone. Right. Oh, they're not alone at all. <laughs> There's, I'd say the majority of people are going through the exact same thing. So what causes you angst now? Does it, are you just cool with everything, or are there things that cause you? I'm, uh, I'm cool with everything, except <laughs> financial situation has always been a problem. <laughs> we do yeah. struggle with that. Um, I'd love to lose about 20 pounds, but that's not going to happen. I go to a gym, but, you know, I'm also at that age where I'm kind of like, you know what, these things are controllable to a certain point, but are you going to let it ruin your life, you know? And there again, I'm on the other side of the hill, so I can look at that and go, I spent way too much time obsessing about money, obsessing about how I looked, my weight, um, uh, obsessing about were my kids good enough, that kind of thing. And now I look back and I go, well, that was just stupid because I wasted so much time. So now, yes, it's easier to sit back and go, it's okay. I give myself permission to, it's okay if you're a couple pounds overweight. It's okay, if, you know, as long as you're staying healthy. And the money, well, you work at it. You just keep working at it. Yeah. Well, hopefully this book will change things. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> Let's go. So, so I want to talk about the book. Well, let, tell me, who's your inspiration? Who inspired your writing? Is there a one person or a group of, of authors or writers or poets? What I write right now, obviously, is it's my family, my husband and my children, my inspiration. But the real, the real reason this came about, the blogging, was because my father read something funny I wrote about five, six years ago and told me, you found your niche. This is what you need to do. He died shortly after that. And mm -hmm. I was like, I have to do this. I have to do this for him. And I had a sister who was also the same way. She actually used to help me edit some of my writing. And unfortunately, she passed away as well. And for those, after losing both of them, I just sat down one night and I said, I have to do this for them. I'm going to do this for them. So the yeah. book, this is for them. Oh, that's awesome. That's beautiful. So what was your process in writing the book? I mean, did you, you know, some people, I think, plan retreats and they go away for a month. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you have that luxury. I or... did go to a conference. <laughs> did you? I went to the Irma Bombay conference. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. And, you know, you, some of your writing does remind me of Irma. I mean, I, I remember as a teenager reading her books oh, and just, you know, loving her. I think she was from Phoenix, too. I'm not sure, which is oh, where Ohio, I am. And, or she, yeah, she went to school in Ohio, but yeah. Oh, wow. Um, it's, yeah, it's just the, the whole writing process. Uh, what I'm doing, actually, is a blog to book. Um, about 80% of the book is uh, from blog posts that have been edited and then we added about 20 percent all new material no one's ever seen before but it's she's the publicist and the publisher are organizing it in a totally different way so it's being presented as totally new material basically it's going to be great it's going to be amazing okay i believe it and and when is the release date for the book we are looking at probably between july 1st and july 15th okay if everything goes okay <laughs> all right very soon, and I've seen the cover for the book, and I, you know, I read Crystal Ponte, uh, Ponte, I think she might be out there, hi Crystal, you know, I read yeah, um, hi, Crystal. <laughs> something that she wrote um, about how the artwork came about, which was interesting. Yes, the cover, the cover design, we had a lot of fun with that, I, I did sketch it out and send it to her on my phone, and I said, this is what I have in mind, and 
she's brilliant. She took it and she ran with it, and I am so thrilled with the way it turned out. It's beautiful. Okay. So, you know, we probably have some writers out there listening now, or they're going to listen to this podcast in the future. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what advice would you offer to whether it's a, a husband, a wife, a mom, or a dad who's, who has a book in them but feels overwhelmed and just doesn't feel like it's possible? Where did they start? Uh, for me, honestly, I, I thought blogging was a great platform to start writing just to get it out there. And you know people are reading it, so you're going to be a little bit more careful about how you're writing. And I have learned so much as far as editing, that sort of thing, and you know, you pick your market. That really is the best advice. I mean, always keep writing. It's easier said than done. I mean, we all get lazy. We go, oh, I'm too busy with the kids, or oh, I gotta go to the gym. But you have to really try to get a little bit of writing in every day if you can. And But I strongly would suggest journaling, blogging, all of that. And then get some people that you can have read your stuff. And not just friends are gonna go, oh, it's great. Get real people to read it and be honest with you and tell you if it's terrible or you know like yeah you've got a great thing here so are there communities that you can suggest to people like to do, you know do these groups have to be necessarily in town or can they be online groups? i belong to a lot of writing groups on facebook and i think uh -huh. that that is the best support system right there i mean there's so many of them anybody can go online and find them and join the groups they're on facebook they're on linkedin um you just get in there and you join the groups they have discussions question and answers. It's fantastic. You can get a lot of help nowadays. Okay. All right. Excellent advice. And actually, I was asking for me because I have a book in me, but I don't know where to start. <laughs> Crystal. <laughs> Crystal. <laughs> Good advice. Good advice. Um, so, so Marsha, I mean, I just, I admire you a lot. I admire the things that you've been through, and I don't know a lot about you, but I can tell, you know, that from the hard times, you've really made some good out of it, you know, and here, like you said, you're on the other side. So what, what, is, what is the message that you want to deliver to people out there who are really trying to juggle it all, you know, be what they would call successful parents and have a happy marriage, but they're just struggling? I would say, first of all, don't take life so seriously. I know that's cliche, but it's true. Life is too short to stress over the little things. Take a deep breath, step back, look at it and think to yourself, how much is this going to matter a year from now or five years from now? It may be really bad right now, but is it really going to matter a year from now? You, you really have to stand back and look at it that way. Um, if you have a passion, don't give up on that passion. You may have to let it sit for a little bit while you're taking care of little ones and work and all those things, but just don't lose sight of it. It's still there. It's still waiting for you. It's not going to go away. You can still have your dreams. It'll be easier when your kids are grown and out of the house. But just don't lose sight of that. And the, th the key is humor, 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 humor. You have got to laugh at yourself. You've got to be able to laugh at yourself and laugh at the situation. If you don't, you are going to just be in the, in the dark depression. You, you have to look at the funny side of life. Oh, perfect. That's great advice. <laughs> so it's almost time to wrap up, Marcia. But before we do, I'm just wondering you know, if you'd be willing to share with the world that the, the things that you are most thankful for right now in this moment today. Nutella, <laughs> why? <No. laughs> uh, obviously my family. I mean, I have such a wonderful support system. My husband is there for me 100%. Um, well, you've seen his pictures in my blog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he lets me take yep. those crazy pictures. Really good pictures. Yes. The kids are very supportive. <laughs> my mom, oh, bless her heart. My mother edits a lot of my stuff for me. She's wonderful. Very grateful to my family, first and foremost. Um, my health. I, I try to take good care of myself. And I... Just, you know, I'm glad that I got the help that I needed when I went through the depression because it has opened up basically a whole new world for me. I see things very differently now and a much, much more balanced, happier person. Perfect. That's a great note to end on. And for people who you might be new to, Marsha, because I think some people out there already know how to find you, how can the people who don't know you look you up? Well, my, web, uh, my blog site is uh, menopausalmom.com. You can find me on Facebook under Menopausal Mother. You can find me on Twitter under Meno Mother. So any three of those sites. And that'll take you also to the author website and everything else. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to spend with me. I, I loved getting to know you a little bit. And I'm looking forward to the book in July. Yay! So everybody keep your eyes out. Yay! <laughs> yes! Thank you for having me. I, this was great. This was wonderful. Thank, thank you. 
thank you, Marcia. And for all you out there listening, this is going to do it for the episode. this episode of the Family Law Insider Podcast. Remember, we're on your side when it matters most. And I'll see you next time.